Hello Nintendo Wii here, welcome to the very first episode of Retro Break. You may have noticed that my channel's changed names, it's no longer Let's Play Retro Games and I will explain why after this video, but first of all, I just wanted to come here, hope you all had a great Christmas and you've had a fantastic New Year as well. By the time this video is out it'll be after New Year. So I just wanted to come here and show you guys some of the things that I got for Christmas and some of the things that I bought with some of my Christmas money. So. Let's get started and then I'll talk a bit about my new channel ideas for 2019 and beyond. So, I'm just going to go through a few of the cool little items that I got for Christmas. The first one here is this Sonic money box uh, with a pound in there I think. I did used to have this a long time ago but for some reason I don't have it anymore so I'm very happy to have this again. Next up I got this really nice Zelda Breath of the Wild light up canvas to go on the wall. It's actually the same as a picture we've got in the hallway, but this one's in a canvas form. And it's actually touch activated, so you just press on it and it actually lights the clouds up in the background, which I think is really cool. The next thing here, and something that I've wanted to try for a long time, is a drone. It doesn't actually have the camera on the bottom though, unfortunately, but I think you can actually attach a GoPro, which I do have, so... Maybe I'll give that a go. We did have a lot of fun flying it around the other night. It's really fun. And it actually controls surprisingly well. So maybe this is sort of the first step into getting into drones a bit more and maybe getting a, a better one in the future. But very happy to have it anyway. It was a lot of fun. Next up here we have the PlayStation Classic. I've been having a lot of fun trying to hack this and get my own games onto it. So far I've only got three working I think. I've got Crash Bandicoot. I've got Crash Team Racing. And I can't remember what the third game was, but I know I've got three games working on there. It's actually really simple to do. Um, it basically all goes off a USB stick, so as long as you follow the instructions, just Google Bleemcast, uh, Bleem Sync, just Google Bleem Sync, and follow the instructions on there. And it's really simple to add your own games onto the PlayStation Classic, so that's something worth doing, and I know they've gone down in price quite a lot recently. Also, a funny little present here, we've got some Pac-Man salt and pepper shakers as well, so that's really cool. Something I don't talk about much on this channel, I'm actually kind of a science nerd as well, so my parents got me these two books here, there's one about Stephen Hawking and there's one about quantum theory. They're actually uh, presented really nicely in sort of a comic book style, which is really cool, so maybe I'll learn something new, maybe I won't. I've read all of Stephen Hawking's books already, but they do seem really fun, so I'm definitely going to try and read through them soon. Also here I have three different kinds of decals or decals for computers or phones and stuff. There's a Zelda one, there's a Super Nintendo one, and there's a Super Mario one as well. I did actually already have the SNES ones and I've actually decorated my laptop with them which looks really cool as you can see there. So I'm going to try and find out what to do with the other ones but I'm sure I'll be able to put them somewhere. Now here's something really cool that I'd actually wanted for a long time. This is the 3D version of Ready Player One. And the reason I wanted the 3D version is, obviously the game is all about virtual reality, and you can actually watch 3D Blu-rays in PlayStation VR, and it actually looks really good. So I can't wait to sit down one night, put on the VR headset, and experience Ready Player One in VR, as it was meant to be watched. Or maybe not, but even so, I'm sure I'm going to love it. I loved the film when it was out in the cinema, and of course I love the book as well. If, you've, if you haven't read the book before, I'd highly recommend going and checking that out, because it's a fantastic read. Especially if you're into retro things like I am. Another cool little retro goodie here. This is the this is the Atari handheld portable little console with 50 built-in games. It's actually really good. So I'll do a few close-ups of it in a bit. The one really big problem I had with this is the screen. You can see there just from turning the screen side to side, even if it's slightly off angle, you completely lose all the colour saturation of the screen, which is really, really off-putting. It's actually so bad that even if you look at it straight on sort of one half of the screen is dark and the other half is light if you can see that so really bad screen but the games itself on the collection are actually pretty good and I think there is a way to output it to the TV which might alleviate some of them problems but it's kind of a shame that the actual handheld itself isn't a bit better in terms of how it actually looks I mean the controls are fine it's got this squidgy circle thing instead of a d-pad which I'm not too fond of but overall it's okay and it's a nice way to experience some classic Atari games without having to plug in the actual big Atari console and a really really cool thing here I'd never even heard of this before 
This is the N64 Anthology book. It's actually really good. It's got a load of in-depth interviews. It's got a history of the console, um, all about the silicon graphics chips. Every little piece of detail you could possibly want to know about the N64 is in this book. And I really had a blast reading it. I've got all the way up to the bit where it actually talks about all the games that were released. And the great thing about this book is it talks about every single game for the N64 library in all regions. So it's actually really, really detailed, really in-depth. And if I pull it out of here, it also comes with a really cool Ocarina of Time poster as well. So I'll try and find somewhere to put that up on the wall. Maybe you'll see it in future videos. In here as well, there was also some art cards. These actually came with the little Atari console, so these are really nice. Um, that one's from Centipede, as you can see. There's one, I'm not sure what they're from, I'm not too up on my Atari stuff, but still cool to have, so maybe I'll put them up on the wall somewhere as well soon. So that was the main Christmas presents that I wanted to talk about. Now I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've bought with my Christmas money. So let's get started with this little pile of games here and maybe judging by the games here you might be able to pick up on a future video that I want to do on the channel so if you if you figure out what all these games have in common leave a comment down below and let me know because you might be onto something so the first one we have here is Meteo's Disney Magic for the DS I haven't played any of these yet by the way apart from this one Sega Rally I haven't played any of the others yet but I'm sure they're I'm sure they're all fun so Sega Rally for the PS3 Gunpei for the PSP. I already have the DS version, but I never had the PSP one before, so I thought I'd pick that up and see what it's all about. I've got to get my PSP charged so I can actually play through some of these games. There is N3 99 Nights for the Xbox 360. I want to try and get N3 2 or 99 Nights 2 as well. I didn't pick that one up just yet, but there's the first one. Here it's a pretty good action RPG sort of game with immersive battles and intense action according to the back of the box. We'll see. Whoops. The next one here, a game that I've wanted for a long time, but unfortunately I've lost the charger for my Vita, so it might still be a little while until I get to play it. This is Lumines Electric Symphony for the PlayStation Vita. I love the I love the Lumines games. In fact, here's Lumines 1 for the PSP as well. I never actually owned the original and I never owned the Vita one. So I've got these two now and I've completed my Lumines collection. It's a great game and it's a really cool, interesting take on the music puzzle game genre, which you'll be hearing about in a later video. And the last game we have here is Space Channel 5 for the Dreamcast, a game that I did used to have but I actually traded it with someone way back in college to get Panzer Dragoon 2 on the Sega Saturn which is in my opinion a better game than this but even still I'm really happy to actually have it again on the Dreamcast. But that's not all, I actually just got back from town and I may have bought myself a few more retro goodies so let's take a look at some of these. These are all for the Atari Lynx. There's quite a few to go through. I was actually in CEX the other day and I noticed they had a few Atari Lynx games. So I actually went back there today and bought all of them. I think there's about 10 games, maybe more. So the first one here, this is, and I don't even have an Atari Lynx yet, by the way. I really need to get one. If you guys know where I can get one, preferably the Model 2 because it looks a bit more comfortable to play. Let me know down below in the comments and I'll try and pick one up soon. So the games are, and let me know if the games are any good as well, they are Rygar, Gauntlet, I love Gauntlet in the arcade so I'm sure this one's going to be really fun, uh, Zybots, never heard of that one before, Electro Cop, again never heard of this one, let me know if they're any good, uh, Ninja Gaiden, of course I've heard of this one, don't know whether it's any good on the Atari or not but still really cool to have, great series. Hydra, never heard of that one. Um, Blue Lightning, I know this was sort of Atari's take on. Um, I know this was sort of Atari's take on Afterburner, so pretty intrigued to see what this one's like. Stun Runner, I actually played this one in the arcade recently, which played really well. So again, very intrigued to see how the Atari Lynx can handle such a complex game. There's a few more here. These ones came with the instruction manuals. They are. Steel Talons, there you go with the instructions. Kong Food, that's a bit of an interesting title. And uh, there's a instructions for Hydra as well, which I just showed. 
And then two games that actually came in the box. They are Chips Challenge, which I hear is a really good game. Don't have any idea what it's about, but it's cool. I've got the box with it and the instructions in there too. And the second one that came with the box is called Crystal Mines 2, which looks really cool. It looks like a sort of Commodore 64 style box. That's another console I'd really, well, PC, but that's another thing that I'd really like to get soon. So there we go. So I got a lot of Atari Lynx games there. Let me know what the best one to start with is. And like I said, let me know where I can pick a system up because I don't actually have any way of playing them yet. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my plans for the future. I'm not going to tell you too much because I don't want to give everything away right away. But as I'm sure you know, I changed my name to Retro Break. I'll go into a little bit of detail about why. Basically, when it was Nintendo Wii, um, I didn't really want to be just associated with Nintendo. And, my, the, and the video that was doing the best for me at the time was a Let's Play. So that's why I changed my name to Let's Play Retro Games. The other reason was I thought if it has retro games in the title, it might be a bit easier to search. Um, and at the time, a few years ago when I actually changed, I was planning on doing a lot more Let's Plays. So that's sort of why I came up with that name to begin with. But over the years I haven't really done any Let's Plays and I feel like that name is kind of not really representative about what the channel is actually about. So I thought now, it's the beginning of a new year, I thought now would be a good time to actually introduce a new name. And the name Retro Break actually came from my game company that I set up a few years ago to release the game Super Donuts, if any of you guys know that. I'm not really selling the game anymore, it's not actually available on the uh, Apple Store. I think it's still on Google Play if you want to go and search for it, but I'm not really pushing for sales or anything. It was just sort of a project that I had a few years ago, but I thought if I use that name I can sort of use it for my videos, I can use it for games that I make in the future, and I can basically use it for anything else. It's sort of my own, my own brand, it's not sort of so generic that it's just Let's Plays, and it means I can open myself up to do a lot more things in the future, so... I've got a lot of really exciting things coming. Like I said, if you know what these games have in common, then you've pretty much guessed the topic of one of the videos that are coming next year. I have a lot more planned. One of the things I really want to talk about this year is the Virtual Boy. So I really hope I manage to get around to doing that video soon. But anyway guys, that's just a little update about my channel and some of the things I got for Christmas. Let me know some of your favourite presents that you got down below if you got anything cool as well. Hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year and I hope you're all looking forward to loads more amazing videos coming on Retro Break. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye!